What's up everyone, my name is Paul and this is a 2017 KTM 350 EXCF and today I'll be installing the Sick Ass Racing multi-function headlight and turn signal switch as well as their start stop switch. This is KTM's street legal dirt bike so it comes stock with mirrors and turn signals but the stock switches are really bad. Let me show you why. The kill switch and start button work just fine, but they take up a lot of space and the throttle is crammed in between the mirror and brake. The real problem is the turn signal switch. This piece of trash broke after two months and just feels awful. It's hard to move it left or right and the left turn signal gets stuck on. Apparently, when you spend $10,000 on a dirt bike, that's not enough money to get a good turn signal switch. My Chinese scooters have better switches than this. Shame on you, KTM. The sick ass racing switches are smaller than stock, so I'm excited to get more adjustment for my levers. As as well as a cleaner look. I'm using a Phillips screwdriver to take off the old turn signal switch. Let's take a look inside and see why this thing is so bad. The lever moves a metal thing and the switch is farther inside. Pushing it in is supposed to somehow move the switch to the middle. All this stuff is jammed up. I cleaned it, still doesn't work. The mirrors take a 14 millimeter wrench and I'm using an eight millimeter socket to remove the clutch lever. Now let's check out the right side. Loosen the throttle, but don't remove it. Then use a Phillips screwdriver to loosen up that start button clamp. I'm taking the brake lever off to make some room. The kill switch takes a 4mm Allen key. Okay, now let's check out the sick ass racing kill switch. The instructions say to jam it in under the throttle, but I want to have it angled and this bump is in the way. I'm trimming the housing a bit. You don't need to do this, I'm just customizing here. The trimming did not leave any holes in the switch and now I can easily slide it in under the throttle. Install the two screws with a Phillips screwdriver, but leave them loose for now. Now let's install the lever and get everything adjusted. The turn signal switch installation starts with a weird little step. Install the rubber spacers. They keep the switch from turning on the bars. I really like how the back part doesn't have any wires. This switch also takes a Phillips screwdriver. I want the switch mounted right by the grip, then the clutch lever goes back on. I have a bit more adjustment than with the old switch, but I still need to make sure the lever doesn't hit it. Let's finish up with that mirror. The right side looks awesome. I couldn't see into the brake fluid level before. The throttle is still a tight fit when I have mirrors, but the lever clearance is great. The left side also looks a bit cleaner, and I moved my clutch lever out a bit so the hose is at less of an angle. I got the switches where I want them, now it's time to do some wiring. First, remove the rubber straps that hold the headlight onto the fork, then pull it up and get the brake hose out. Unplug the turn signals. Green is right and red is left. Don't forget to unplug the headlight. The turn signal and headlight switch has a 3 pin and a 6 pin connector. Unplug them and plug the new switch in. Unplug the 4-pin connector to the start button and remove it from the bike. The new switch will plug into the same place. Pull on the blue wire that goes to a single terminal to disconnect the kill switch, then plug in the new switch. You'll know which wire because it's labeled. The last wire is a ground that goes under the gas tank. First take the seat off, then the gas tank needs to come out. Use an 8mm socket to remove two bolts from each side of the fairings and pull them out. Unplug the fuel filter next and the gas tank is ready to come out. Follow the ground wire from the old kill switch. It's bolted onto the frame just behind the left radiator. Now I just need to install the new ground wire here. Route the ground wire the same way as the old one, then the gas tank and seat can go back on. Use zip ties to organize the wires a bit and make sure they aren't going to get pulled when you turn the handlebars. Remember, the left turn signal plugs into the red connector and the right one is green. Now the headlight can go back on. Okay, let's test it out. The start button works. The kill switch is different from the stock toggle type. You hold this one to kill the engine. The headlight switch is nice. It has an off position and includes high and low beam indicators. That's awesome. The turn signal switch is just a simple rocker switch. That is so much better than the complicated trash KTM put on here. And of course, the horn is nice too. Okay, that's it. The installation's all done. I actually can't believe how easy that was. It's pretty much just plug and play. So far, these look like they're much better quality than original equipment, and they look really nice. Time will tell, of course, but at the moment, I'm stoked.